Praise the Lord. Good night. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege, beloved and friends, once again to be here this morning night to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord. Everyone is in good health and happiness, regardless of our situation in the world. As I always say, beloved and friends, Jesus said in this in his words, Lo, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you, even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome tonight? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty? Isn't that majestic that God promised to be with us in every situation, in every circumstance? circumstances in every trial in every testing in every storm in every decision making he said in his words a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come that it will welcome tonight let's give a big hand god bless you richly tonight praise god god bless you richly father god tonight i pray that you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the holy spirit anoint mortal man of clay as i minister your words tonight your words will go forth with dunamis and power and the anointing of the holy spirit that many will be healed many will be saved many will be blessed many will be delivered many will be set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness in the mighty name of jesus amen praise god tonight beloved and friends i'll be short tonight Praise God. Now, today, I, tonight, I want to st uh, talk, speak about uh, a specific group, uh, a specific group of people. Praise the Lord that will be left behind on the day of the rapture. Yes, my friend, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Remember that is a passage from the New Testament uh, of the Bible that provides insight into the character of people in the last days and we all know tonight uh, that we are living in the very last days uh, and the characteristics that we see listed in this passage uh, of scripture are the same characteristics that we see happening in our day and era yes my friends the passage outlines several negative traits tonight uh, and behaviors exhibited by people in the last days these characteristics include selfishness, self-centeredness, and a focus on personal desires. Yes, and interests above all else, beloved and friends, people will become lovers of themselves seeking personal gain yes and pleasures without regarding for regard for others. For the more tonight. Paul mentioned that individuals in the last days will be driven by greed and materialism, pursuing wealth and possessions, my friends, at the expense of moral values. Yes, they will engage in dishonest practices, exploiting others, yes, for personal gains. Praise the Lord. Paul also highlights the prevalence of arrogance, pride, and boastful, boastful attitudes among people in these times. They will have a sense of superiority, yes, and display a lack of humility and or gratitude. However, tonight, beloved and friends, tonight we are going to be focusing on one verse specifically, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 5, having a form of godliness, but denying, denying the power thereof from such, the scripture says, turn away, turn away. Those who display a form of godliness are those who outwardly show religious behavior. They appear to be godly, my friends, but it only a facing their religion lacks true power, beloved and friends, as seen by their unchanging lives. Yes, they talk about God Almighty, but continue to live in sin. Yes, and they, con and they con continue with their lifestyle. So tonight, what is a simple definition of godliness? My friends, it is living in a way that reflects the character of God itself, obeying his commandments 
and seeking to honor, honor and please him. Please God in all areas of your life and even more simply, a sim more simple definition of godliness goes as follows tonight. Godliness is not sinning tonight. My friends, godliness is not sinning. Yes, my friends, how do we know Jesus was godly because he lived 33 years on this earth and not sinning yes my friends he who is the holiest person in your church when it is the person who sins yes my friends at least in your church who is the holy least godly person in your church is the person who sins isn't that so the most most and now our bible our bible in second timothy chapter 3 verses 5 clearly tells us tonight it clearly tells us uh, that they, they are groups of individuals who have a form of godliness. Uh, yes, this group of people will be left behind during the rapture. Yes, my friends, and when they are left behind after the rapture, a percentage of them will be shocked uh, by the by the that they are left behind because of their minds. They were Christians, and a percentage of them will not be shocked because they know they know exactly that the way they have been living is against the word of God yes my friends the truth is tonight you know that God is and you know that this same God who is tonight the same God who made you my friends and beloved you know that God is that God is eternal do you know that God is invisible tonight and omnipresent? Hallelujah. Therefore, my friends, you know that God is watching. God is watching you and you also know. You know that on the day, on the day, God will judge you. God will judge you. The truth is same. It is some of you have God's laws. You have the Bible tonight. You know the Bible, but yet, my friends, you do not do what the Bible says. Hallelujah. That's right, my friends. There is what is spoken of in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, yes, but denying, denying the power thereof. Yes, he says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 17, clearly tells us tonight, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an angel, and with the trump of God Almighty, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Yes, first then the Bible tells us, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds yes beloved to meet the lord god in the air and so shall we be with the lord isn't that awesome tonight are we moving towards the rapture and those who have a form of godliness my friends and beloved but denies the power it is denies power will be left behind now let us consider the scenario 24 let's see one day before the rapture one day before the rapture the sky will not turn this black midday causing a, a apocalyptic uh, yes appearance the sun will not stop uh, shining and there will be an overwhelming mental shower they're dominating the skies people will not be looking of anticipating the rapture they will be a great they will be a great earthquake shaking the foundations of the earth nor will the waves roar uncontrollably lightning will not flash intensely these dramatic events described will not occur one day before the rapture instead people will continue living their normal lives either in a godly or ungodly way yes my friends picture the scene tonight a world hurrying and with activity people going about their daily routines living their normal everyday lives obviously my friends the impending moment and the bible tells us that when the rapture takes place it will occur suddenly suddenly the world will be caught off guard unaware of what has transpired the godly will be living and in alignment with God's will while the ungodly will continue in the sinful ways unlike other 
prophetic events in the rapture will happen without any per signs or announcement there will be no countdown or ticking clock to warn us beloved and friends the bible assures us that no one knows the day nor the hour even not even the angels in heaven not a son, beloved and friends, but only the Father. Hallelujah. This truth tonight emphasizes the urgency of living in readiness of all times for the rapture could occur at any moment. Beloved and friends, we, for we all know that in, and I says the whole world could be, yes, in one day before the rapture, this very moment. If not, the rapture, some of us could be one day from breathing or last breath yes my friends are you living a godly life yes my friends of not sinning are you living a godly life or an ungodly life today my friends remember remember the simplest definition of a godly life tonight is not sinning a simple definition is not sinning. a godly life is not having a secret addiction that no one knows about a godly life is not having a secret life that you are doing your best to keep hidden my friends a godly life is one life yes a godly life is not cheating on your husband yes a godly life is not cheating on your wife yes my friends a godly life is not engaging in dishonesty or deceit whether it be in personal relationships or business dealings or a godly life is not driven by selfish ambition or a rentless pursuit of personal gain. A godly life is not characterized tonight by a lack of integrity or a disregard for biblical moral values. No, my friends, a godly life is not marked by harboring, harboring bitterness, resentment, or unforgiveness towards others. Beloved and friends, godly life is not consumed by materialism and the rentless pursuit of wealth and possessions. Beloved and friends, a godly life is not defined by engaging in sexual immorality. Beloved and friends, tonight the godly, the godly will come to live in obedience to God's word, remaining faithful and steadfast. Uh, their lives will be marked by love, humility, and devotion to Christ. On the other hand, my friends, the ungodly will persist in their rebellion, indulging in worldly desires, and rejecting the truth. Yes, my friends, they will be blinded by their sinful pursuit suits on aware of the impending divine intervention beloved and friends tonight now that it is godliness now what is godliness godliness is not a, a mystical quality it's not a vibe goodness Goodiness is not about whether you can preach or whether a person has any public gifts. The godliest person can be be garden day variety saints. Not one knows or listen to don't even make the mistake of believing because someone has a great following or has a big platform or mega church. My friends, that person is godly. Good godliness is not about performing miracles tonight or performing wonders tonight my friends godliness is not sinning hallelujah godliness is is it is living in a way that reflects the character of god and obeying his commandments it is not living a double life beloved and friends it's not living one life for when people are watched in complete difference life when born when no one is wrong what is godliness tonight Praise God in a quiet uh, suburb neighborhood. There lives, uh, they live a man named Michael. Michael was a respectable member of his community, known for his active involvement in local church. Uh, he held a prominent position in the congregation and was regarded as a pillar of righteousness. Uh, beloved and friends, however, beneath, uh, beneath this face of godliness, uh, Michael harbored a secret uh, that challenged the uh, authenticity of his fit beloved and friends despite being a devoted husband to his wife of many years michael found himself captivated by the allure of temptation 
He has developed an emotional connection with the woman he met through a community outreach program. They been meeting in secret sharing intimate conversations and stolen moments of reflection show both were married they justified their actions by claiming that their spouses were unaware yes and unaffected beloved and friends michael found himself from between from torn from between his commitment to his marriage and the excitement of his forbidden relationship in an attempt to justify his infidelity he convinced himself that his actions didn't deny his wife anything yes my friends in fact he argued that these secrets encounter added an element of excitement to his relationship with his spouse despite his role as a prominent figure within the church michael felt no guilt no guilt for his actions on sundays michael faithfully attend church and actively participate in teaching a class yes my friends he present himself as a devout follower of Christ wearing wearing his religious mass for all to see however however my friends deep down deep down inside he knew that his behavior contradicted the principles he supported to appeal yes beloved and friends the story shreds light on the concept of having a form of godliness but denying the power Michael's action exposes exposes the discrepancy between his public image as a religious leader and his private choices yes my friends his attempt to compartmentalize his faith and indulge in sinful desires highlighted the emptiness of his spiritual spirituality beloved and friends the moral of this story aligns with having a form of godliness it serves as a cautionary reminder that true godliness requires an authenticity wholeheartedly commitment to living living out one's faith beloved and friends superficially displays on religious activities and empty rituals hold no value if they are not accompanied by a genuine surrender to God's transformative power hallelujah now I want to ask you a question tonight if we were one day before the rapture do you have true assurance answer the question of salvation tonight or do or you have you live an ungodly life having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof my friends you may ask how can I live a godly life focus on the cross of Jesus Christ the cross of Christ was not only put there to there to free you and from sin penalty it was also there for us to live godly lives and for us to die to sin beloved and friends and to say no to sin beloved and friends the cross was also there that sin sin power over us may be broken may be broken there are those who are listening to me tonight whose christian life are no different from the way they were years ago in fact their lives remain just the same as it was before the day they claim to have been converted beloved what are we to say about people like this tonight you have a form of godliness yes my friends but deny its power hallelujah are you saying that god has saved you fill you with the holy spirit and redeem you and yet continue to live in sin beloved friends what are we to say about people like you tonight praise god anyone who truly comes to know christ hates sin tonight and live and and, and lives of a life live a life that show that the hatred for sin yes my friends yes we do not enter heaven or receive receive salvation because we do not sin it is by the grace of God that we are saved yes however tonight anyone who is saved by grace is transformed for they have died with Christ on the cross at Calvary in conclusion tonight I'm short yes the word spoken carry a weight challenge for those who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ it is a call tonight my friends a call to self-reflection 
and examination stop ticking of the authenticity of our faith and we can ignore the shark reality that there are individuals among us tonight who's and across the world whose Christian lives have shown no transformation remaining strident and unchanged over the years the question arise yes my friends what shall we see about people who profess godliness yet deny the power can we truly say and claim to be saved, filled with the Holy Spirit and redeemed by the blood of Christ while continue to live in a manner contrary tonight to his teachings, beloved and friends, hallelujah, family, relatives, genuine salvation in Christ produces a profound transformation within the hearts and lives of believers. Yes, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit tonight empowers us to hate sin, hate sin, and live in a way that reflects our love to God. We are not saved by our own efforts tonight. Yes, by the avoiding sin, but solely by all by unremitted grace, yes, unmerited grace of God. However, the transformative work of grace within us is unmistakably true. Followers of Christ tonight are called to embrace the reality that they have died with Him on the cross. Yes, beloved, this identification with Christ's death signifies tonight the profound break from the power of the dominion of sin in our lives, the old sin is crucified and we are raised to newness of life in him this new life is characterized tonight by a genuine hatred for sin beloved and friends a desire for holiness and an unwavering commitment beloved and friends to live in accordance with God's word hallelujah praise God it has been a joy and great privilege yes my friends to be here this Monday night to minister the word of God. God bless you richly. I love you deeply from the depths of my heart. I will pray for you in the next session. God bless you richly. Have a sweet night rest. I'll see you later in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry to be so harsh tonight, but I want everyone to make the rapture tonight before I leave. Are you safe tonight? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you certain its time is running out? Are you certain that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you certain about your salvation? Hope so tonight, beloved and friends. God bless you richly. I love you greatly in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.